In this video, I will define the concepts of supremum and infimum of a set. These two concepts are very much related to maximum and minimum of a set, but they are a bit more useful. Here is why they are more useful. Um, look at these two examples. If I consider the closed interval 0, 2, then I can say that 2 is the maximum of that set. But if I consider the open interval, 2 is not the maximum of that set because it's not an element of the set. And yet, to a certain extent, it cannot behave like the maximum. It's kind of the largest element on the set, except it's not on the set. So I want to define a new concept that we are gonna, going to call supremum that works both for this set and for this set. And therefore, that concept will be more useful than maximum. So I'm going to define supremum, and this is going to come together with a few other definitions. So let's go in the steps. We will be looking at a set that I'll call big A and a real number a little a. The number may or may not be in the set, that's irrelevant. First, the easier notion is the notion of upper bound. We are going to say that the number is an upper bound of the set when it is greater than all the elements in the set. And for every x in a, x is less than or equal than a. So an upper bound is something greater or equal than all the elements in the set. For example, if I consider either the closed interval 0, 2 or the open interval 0, 2, then 2 is certainly an upper bound. Um, 2 satisfies this definition. But so does 2.1 or pi or 100 or in fact any number greater than 2. So these sets have a lot of upper bounds. By contrast, if I take a set like the integers, there is no upper bound. Uh, there is no real number which is greater than all or equal than all the integers. Now, among all the upper bounds, I want to see what is special about 2. In the first case, 2 is the only upper bound that is an element of the set, but in the second case it isn't, so I'm not going to go that, that way. What is special about 2 in both cases is that it is the smallest of all the upper bounds, and that is the definition of supremum. The supremum is the smallest of all the upper bound, which is why it is also called the least upper bound. The least upper bound, or the supremum, is a number which 1 is an upper bound, and 2 it is the smallest of all of them. Or in other words, if I find any other upper bound, then a must be less than or equal than it. So again, it is an upper bound which is the smallest of all the upper bounds. So if I go back to these two examples, both for the closed interval 0, 2 and the open interval 0, 2, the least upper bound or supremum is 2. Whereas for the integers, there is no upper bound, therefore there is no least upper bound. Now the difference between these two examples is that in the first one, the supremum is an element of the set, and in the second one it isn't. Well, that's what we call a maximum. So when the supremum is also an element of the set, then we call it a maximum. So the first set has 2 as both the maximum and the supremum. In the second set, 2 is only a supremum, but is not the maximum, and the third set has nothing. And finally, for to complete all the definitions, we say that a set is bounded above when it has at least one upper bound. And if it has at least one, it will necessarily have more than one. So going back to these three examples, the first two are bounded above, whereas the second one isn't. So this is the definition of supremum and the related concept of maximum, upper bound, and so on. Uh, we of course have another full set of definitions if I re reverse the direction of the inequality. If instead of talking about things which are greater than everything in the set, I talk about things which are smaller than everything in the set. And that's how we will define infimum. If instead of talking about a real number which is greater than everything in A, I talk about a real number which is smaller or equal than everything in A, we call it a lower bound. Among all the lower bounds, the interesting one is not the smallest, it is the largest, which is what we call the greatest lower bound, or infimum. The infimum is simply a number which is a lower bound of the set, and is greater than all other lower bounds of the set. The infimum may or may not be an element of the set. When it is also an element of the set, we call it the minimum. And finally, a set is bounded below when it has at least one lower bound, and necessarily more than one. To complete all the definitions that you may encounter, if we ever say that a set is bounded and we do not specify, it means that it is both bounded above and bounded below. To conclude this video, there is one property of suprema and infima which is particularly important. It is called the least upper bound principle. It also has many other names. And it says that if a real is a subset of the real numbers is bounded above and non-empty, then it must have a least upper bound. 
In other words, if it has one upper bound, it has the smallest upper bound, as long as it's non-empty. If you think about examples, this makes sense. This is intuitive. All the examples you can construct satisfy this, because, well, all examples satisfy it. But this is actually a very important property of the real numbers. If you study analysis and try to construct the real numbers axiomatically, then this property plays a fundamental role in that construction. We are going to just take it as a given. Uh, in fact, it's often called an axiom. And of course, since we write it with um, upper bounds, there is another version with lower bounds. Uh, I guess that would be the greatest lower bound principle, which I invite you to write as an exercise.